So here I have my demo project that I called Finger Twister. The idea is that the game shows you how many fingers you need to place down and you're scored based on your success rate. But here is one problem. Testing this game on the computer is basically impossible because you can't have multiple game cursors. That's why in this episode I will show you a simple way to test your mobile creation on a real Android device using two different ways. Let's go! Let's start with setting up everything so that your game will be compatible with Android devices. First, in the Unity Hub, make sure that the install that you're using has a small Android icon like here. If not, press those small three dots, click on the Add Modules and then select Android Build Support. Please make sure that those child checkboxes are also selected. Then click Done and wait a few minutes. After everything is installed, open your project and at the very top select File, Build Settings and make sure that there is a small Unity logo next to the Android platform. If not, select Android and click Switch Platform. Ok, so now time to talk about our first method. The idea is that we'll use our phone as the Unity Editor Remote. As you can see, when I press play on my project in Unity, the game window will be mirrored on the Android screen. What's more, any input from the phone sensors like gyroscope and any touch input is being transferred to the editor so that we'll be able to test out our game. Here is how to set it up in three simple steps. First, go to Google Play Store on your device and search for Unity Remote 5. Install it. Then connect your phone using USB cable to your computer, select File Transfer and launch Unity Remote app. So here comes step 2. At the very top of Unity Editor, select Edit, Project Settings and go to the Editor tab. Here you can see some settings for Unity Remote. First, change the device to any Android device and then select what kind of compression you'd like to have. Basically, JPEG and downsize resolution allows you to see more frames per second, while PNG and normal resolution will display sharp elements but with much lower frame rate. This settings depends solely on your project, so be sure to experiment a bit with them. Ok, so for many phones, that should be it. Go back to the main Unity window and press play. After a few seconds, the phone screen should display the game view from the editor. If, like in my case, nothing happens or there's an error in the console, we need to do one more step. We need to enable developer mode. That can be a bit tricky and depending on your phone manufacturer, this process might look a bit different. Usually, if you go to the settings and about this phone, you need to click multiple times or either build number or system version till you are now developer pops out. Then go back and find a new tab called Developer Options. Here we need to enable two things. First will be USB debugging, which will allow us to connect Unity with our device. The second one will be install via USB that will come handy later on. Great, that should be it. Now open Unity Remote app and press play in the Unity editor. On your phone, it should be a matter of seconds when the live game view will become interactable. If there is something wrong with the resolution, please make sure that here at the top of the game view, you've selected the exact resolution of your phone. Simply click on this plus icon, name your phone and input the exact resolution values found on the internet. Now, whenever you touch something on your phone, that input is mirrored to the Unity player and you can freely test out your game. But what if this process is not enough for you? For example, you're developing a game that requires you to move a bit with your device, or maybe the remote screen is too laggy for you. Fortunately, on Android you can easily build your app and transfer it to your device. You might have already tried that, but what if I told you that Unity can manage everything for you by selecting only one option? If you click on File at the very top of Unity Editor and then Build Settings, you can see this Build and Run option. 
To make that work, you need to make sure that the device is still plugged in using USB cable and that both USB debugging and install via USB is still on, like I showed you a second before. If everything is ready, here in the build settings window, click refresh and you should see your Android phone in the list. Select it and click build and run. If this is the first time you are building this project, you will be prompt to save a local APK file. I would suggest creating a build folder and saving your file there. After pressing save, Unity will start to build, package and install your app on a real device. After a couple of seconds, everything should be ready and the app should launch on your mobile device. What's even better is that if I'd like to make some kind of change, for example, I'll modify the color of this text, I can very quickly push that change to a connected phone by pressing Command B on a Mac or Ctrl B on Windows. That will immediately start building our game and send it to our phone in just a few seconds. So that's it. Thanks a lot to my awesome patrons that support this channel. Be sure to check out my other videos about Unity Basics. See you soon.